Welcome to ELD Lab 7. In this lab, we will be covering how to implement the fast Fourier transform IP, which is a floating point standard. So the lab will be of three parts. It will have a theory component, a comparison with Python. So how do you implement FFT in Python? And a Vivardo component that will show how to make the test bench and how to integrate the actual uh, module in Vivardo. So before we continue with the lab, we need to first learn a bit of theory. So here, this is what we want to implement. We want to implement a single position floating point standard where one bit is for the sign, eight bits for uh, the exponent and 23 bits for mantis. So you can learn a lot more about how do you convert normal numbers to single position numbers online. So after this, we need to actually cover the axis stream part. So uh, AXI is a type of protocol. AXI normally has two parts. It has a master that initiates your transactions and a slave that responds to these transactions that is initiated. So a transaction would just be a transfer of data from one point to another. So you can see here that this master writes transactions, the slave here, it responds to certain transactions and then it gives the data back to the master. The type of AXI protocol that we are interested in is AXI stream. So in AXI stream, we have a single channel, only a single channel that we have. And we can transmit data for unlimited uh, amounts. So that's basically what unlimited bursts mean. So here the AXI is this component. It has the, again, the master that we said and a slave that responds. So the master would put data onto the data bus and the valid signal once the data is on the data bus. So this sends the actual data. And once the slave is actually ready to receive it, it will send this to the master. And once the slave has sent it's ready and the master sends it's valid, once both of them are actually one, that means the master is ready to send and the slave is ready to receive, will the data transaction be completed? And this is only for one channel and then you can have several channels such as this. A few key important things to note about stream, there are no address, but we have the use of the write channel of AXI4. And unlike AXI4, the, the stream interface can do unlimited bursts of unlimited data. So that's the key part of that we have for uh, AXI stream. So here we can see a class, a simple example of why the AXI stream is normally used. It's normally used like in single processing algorithms where you have an AC to DC converter, you need to perform some FIR filtering on it, and then are uh, a discrete for your transform. We would be implementing this part in today's lab, or you can also see AXI stream being used in video processing algorithms where you have a camera that has to be passed through a filter. So this entire uh, operation has been done by AXI stream protocols. So here we can see a few examples of AXI stream being used. So once the information has actually been put onto the data bus, we can see that the valid signal has been high for that certain point. And then here we also notice that the ready signal that was a part of the slave becomes one only after some time the valid actually became high. So only at the next positive clock edge, which is this edge, would we notice the uh, signal being uh, transaction being completed. So once the ready signal became high at this point, because the next positive edge has was passed, the next positive edge, which is here, that is where the transaction will take place. Similarly, in this case, we see that the T ready was high way before the actual valid signal became high. So only once the data was passed onto the data bus and then the valid became high uh, subsequently, at this positive edge, there was no uh, possibility for any transaction to take place. And only at this positive edge, once both of the signals were high, both of the signals being T ready and T, uh, T valid and T ready, would the transaction take place at this point. And this is a simple example of when both of them are um, changing at the same time. So here T ready and T valid, both of them uh, switch at the same point in time. And then only at the next positive edge, do we see the transaction take place? So transaction would have taken place at this positive edge. A bit of background about Fourier transform. Uh, it's an algorithm that computes a discrete Fourier transform or sequence or the inverse Fourier transform. The Fourier analysis converts a signal from its original domain, which is often in time or space to a representation of the frequency domain or vice versa. So if it's in time, it'll go to frequency domain, or if it's in frequency, it'll go to the uh, time domain via the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform respectively. And the type of Fourier transform we are trying to implement is a fast Fourier transform. So this is just an example of the 
phosphorylated transform in action where you have a simple sinusoidal signal and this could be of like frequency that uh, could be jumbled but once you actually do the fourier transform phosphorylated transform this you can see that it's simplified into the two frequencies that we have here 